Selfishly, I'm always really happy whenever one of these big wrestling companies does a pay-per-view overseas because I know that shit's going to start earlier in the day, which means even if the show runs longer, I'm not fighting sleep, and I can come on here, do the review, and be done at a decent hour. I love it. And I also am always a big fan of whenever a wrestling company, whether it be WWE or in this case AEW, was able to do one of their big shows in front of a legit big crowd. Not in a 15, 20,000 seat arena, but in a 70, in this case, 80 plus thousand seat stadium. Because when that stadium is full and those people are hot and into it, there isn't much that's better than professional wrestling from an entertainment standpoint. Now, you're certainly going to have a lot of people say a lot of things about this show. It was a historic and important seminal event in AEW history. There's no question about it. Um, you're going to have those that are going to try and sit there and sell you a bill of goods that this show was fucking amazing and all the matches delivered. And that's biased bullshit. Don't buy into that. Come on. The same battles used to fight with people back in the day with ROH. Like if every show, every time, every match is amazing, then your bar is broken because that's just not fucking possible. And it certainly didn't happen on this show. And if you got others on the flip side of the bias spectrum that are going to sit there and say that this show absolutely sucked all the way across, they're full of shit too and should be called out as well. The truth about this show lands somewhere in the middle. I uh, started off all right with the first match, Samoa Joe and CM Punk. These two young, hungry lions showed us the future is bright and the future is now. They even took the Brock Lesnar spot, opened up the show, because that's one of their heroes, apparently. The John Cena, Randy Orton, and Hulk Hogan sequence that these guys had, again, paying homage to their heroes. I thought that this match personally could have used another couple of minutes because I was really into it. The finish felt kind of quick and out of nowhere with Punk's Pepsi plunge to Joe off the top. Uh, but apparently the real battle happened before the match. And there's conflicting reports. So I don't know what's true yet. Here's what I am going to say. If there, were, It's true that there was an altercation between Jack Perry and CM Punk before CM Punk's match. Because of some of the shit involving this glass spot and then, oh, the glass is real. Jack said that in his match on the pre-show. If either one of these idiots thought that this night, this moment was the right time for them to have an altercation, they should be fired immediately. No excuse, no defense, no justification. Fuck, 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 fucking fired. This night was too important. It mattered too much. And you want to talk about Punk and the all-out all media scrum last year going into business for himself. He certainly did. This, like if Punk started it with Perry, Punk should be fired, period. I don't want to hear any excuses. If Perry started it, he should be fired. Nobody's bigger than the fucking company. And it's time that Tony Khan takes a goddamn stand and show them who the fucking warden is in the damn asylum. It's insane to sit there and let this shit continue to happen with no consequences. Anyways... Fucking idiots. How could you not behave on the most important night in the company's history? How fucking stupid do you have to be? Next up, Bullet Club Gold and Takeshita versus The Elite and Kota Ibushi. I've grown to become a fan of Jay White and Juice Robinson, certainly. However, I was not a fan of this match. I don't think the London crowd was really either. Uh, especially with that finish. Hey, you got to set up Takeshita and Omega. You can do it fucking better than that. That finish was a wet fart out of nowhere. It sucked. This match was lame. And the crowd silence at the end spoke volumes. Biggest show in the company's history. And two of your EVPs, two of the members of the Elite, were in arguably one of the worst matches of the night. Then, speaking of the Elite, you had the Bucks of Suck taking on FTR for the AEW Tag Team Championship. And this match was infinitely better than the one that came before it. Although this match still was kind of... Mm. Uh, it, it was less annoying than the typical Bucks of Suck match. Um, certainly kicking out of too many finishers, doing too much shit. Um, it was a little sloppier than I would have expected between these two teams that have worked together before. However, I'm going to be a little nice on this night and say at least the Bucks and FTR did business and the right team won. The Bucks and or FTR could have said, no, we're not going to do this. And could have been in some lame-ass tag match instead. No, they did business. Omega and Page 
were in a worthless fucking match. And CM Punk, admittedly, he was the curtain jerker here. Just saying. Which brings us to the stadium stampede. But you know, those that love the extreme kind of hardcore style are really probably going to like this. I think it's dog shit. Um, I, I'll give credit where credit's due. The spot with Sue was a lot of fun. But then to immediately, as soon as Sue's there, and all of a sudden here's Penta Obscure or whatever the fuck he's called, and the broken ladder spot and all this other bullshit. Like, I love that Eddie Kingston makes me believe that he really hates Claudio. I wish more wrestlers could make me feel that they actually legitimately hate their opponents. But this match was awkward to watch at home because you had split screens. It's going all over the place. And admittedly, it's just another fucking Moxley match. Maybe if this was truly special, hey, it's cool to see Santana and Ortiz, but I haven't seen Moxley do this shit several times this year all fucking ready. Maybe it would have mattered, but it didn't fucking move me. Some people like this shit. Good for them. I don't. I have some standards, apparently. It sucked to me. The AEW Women's Championship four-way, speaking of another match, it kind of stunk. I typically hate triple, triple threats. And Fatal 4 Ways. And this match kind of showed why. It's really hard to have a consistent theme. It's really hard to be able to focus on what's going on. It's always about balancing out rest and everything else. It just sucks. Like, at least they were trying to tell a story here between Tony Storm and Soraya. Story probably would have worked better if Tony Storm was still the champion. Although I probably understand why they had her drop at Sheeta a few weeks ago. Sheeta was a crappy women's champion in a shitty era of wrestling where you didn't have any fans in the buildings for months. Um, so they threw her a frickin' bone here. Fine, whatever. But all this match was about was Soraya getting her big moment, and she got it, and the crowd loved it, and that's great, and that's all this match was fucking for. And now she could go sit there and defend her transphobic boyfriend. Next. At this point, I'm looking at this show, and I'm saying, this is actually pretty underwhelming, and it matches my fears before the show. But leave it to the Young Lions! to come through at the end of the day to save this shit. And of course, when you're talking about franchise players, the future of the business, you're looking at Sting and you're looking at Christian and you're looking at this coffin match. And it was fantastic. It is amazing. I can talk about this with the last few matches on this card. It is amazing how much better these matches flow when you have people that know what the fuck they're doing, people that actually know how to legitimately work and tell a story, and when the fans actually give a shit about what is going on. Like, this was great. Sting did some fuck it crazy shit. Darby Allen did too. Swerve did. Christian did. They all freaking did. And to those that are saying, well, Swerve Strickland's hair was sticking out of the coffin. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. You say, why? I say, stop being a hater. Always trying to hold the young lions down. Bad enough Sting wasn't wrestling for the AEW World Championship on this show. In all seriousness, though. I enjoyed it, and I think most people did too. Chris Jericho, Will Ospreay was a step or two below that. Solid. Jericho was a bit botchy here, especially that one lion salt. They tried to play it off like this was Ospreay trying to hit a move. No, Jericho just fucking botched, and it was one of the only botch in this match. But the good thing about this is Ospreay's another one of those guys like Omega. Like if he's in there with another guy that could do the same shit as him, they try to do too much. They, they just they don't tell a fucking story. They don't. But when they face somebody like a Jericho, forces them to slow down. They actually have to try and work around that other person. And when they do the big spectacular shit, it really stands out like it did for Osprey in this case. Solid match. Young Lion didn't go over here. The Trios Championship. I'm so glad AEW decided, hey, this is our biggest show in history. Let's go ahead and book one of the most popular tag team acts in our company's history on this show. What could possibly go right? Everything! This was great. House of Black with their Wyndham Rotunda Bray Wyatt tribute with the lantern and, the, and their entrance. And then you see all the fireflies, like a little bittersweet as you're seeing it. But cool of them to take that moment and acknowledge that same thing for the commentators as well. There's a lot of bad for the commentators on this night, but uh, this moment certainly wasn't one of them. And then, you know, <laughs> the Prince Andrew line from Max Caster was amazing. Um, but this match... You know, there's the young lion, badass Billy Gunn. He's going back to his roots, people, his roots. He can't be stopped. Rawr! But how great was that? It was a really good match. 
They all got their moments to shine, but at the end of the day, they did what was best for business. You got to see the gay guy hit the scissors at Julia Hart, however you're supposed to feel about that. Um, but Billy Gunn for the win. They're the new trios champions. The Acclaim have arrived, and they had a big-ass scissor me party. It was fantastic. But then we get to all the other stuff aside. Like I said, my, my excitement level was up after those previous few matches. But this AEW World Championship match, to me, was a slam dunk. I loved it. Like, MJF, Adam Cole, their act the past several weeks has been fantastic. And it continued here. You know, it had me wondering beforehand, like, are they actually going to have Adam Cole turn on MJF? Felt like it was leaning more that way. And they didn't go there. They teased it, certainly, right? But the way this played out, like, this shows you how well a babyface MJF can work. It was fantastic. Like, even the ref bumps, you could say, well, that was a little unnecessary. Nah, you know what? It's in front of fucking 80 plus thousand people. Let him do some crazy shit. I, I lower my, like, annoyance level a little bit because I say, you gotta find a way to fucking deliver in these spots, right? Um... But the story these guys told, the way they worked this match, the structure of it, the flow of it was fantastic. It was fantastic. I loved it. And yes, I even loved when they hugged it out afterwards. I loved Roddy Strong's involvement in here. All of this shit worked. So if I had only watched the last four matches of this show, I would have said, man, this is one of the best wrestling pay-per-views I've probably seen in years. Unfortunately, I had the first half of the show that was kind of into. So I can't sit there and say this was an all-timer. I certainly don't think this was AEW's best pay-per-view from top to bottom because it wasn't. Let's be honest here, folks. Come on. It might be their most important. It's their most significant. It certainly is. You know, and it's a great night for the company. Absolutely. And they should be commended for that. This card started off looking underwhelming, and it was, and I still feel myself feeling a little underwhelmed. However, the last hour to hour and a half, it got a lot better, and I feel much better about my viewing experience than I thought I was going to about like 2 or 30 or 3 o'clock Eastern. I was kind of looking and saying, oh, God, I hope I don't have to tear apart the show. I really don't want to. So I'm glad that this show rallied the last few matches. You can let me know in the comments what you thought of All In. You know, you got the announcement next year. They're going to have it at Wembley again, apparently August 25th, 2024. So good shit. Look forward to that next year. In the meantime, though, it was a solid outing. Now I got to make the decision whether or not I'm going to buy all out next week. And my initial thought is, nah.